Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. The Welcome Home TV repair shop was a semi-abandoned building close to the center of home. Its previous owner vanished under mysterious circumstances. However, it didn't seem like any puppet living in home was particularly concerned about the man's disappearance. Of course, he left behind the building and everything in it, including you. You were a puppet, like many others, but you were special, as your head was a TV. The heavy piece of electronic equipment was tightly set on your shoulders, its cables connected into a wall outlet. Of course, under your unusual head was a regular puppet body. The felt your body and arms were made out of were pleasant earthly brown, and you wore a tattered old yellow raincoat. And despite the fact you had legs, they were quite useless due to the heaviness of your head. But there was something else that made you even more special. Due to the antenna on your TV head, you had the ability to broadcast videos from another dimension called IRL. Showing strange humanoid apes in clothing doing regular day-to-day -day things, such as how to tie your shoes or them attending a zoo. It were always different children, of course. When the puppets of home realized you were able to show them a world beyond their small reality, they started to spend time with you. To avoid missing any special program, you had been given a remote with an on and off switch that was connected to the neighborhood speaker system. Everybody knew that whenever the Toreador march echoed over home, every neighbor immediately knew that a special program was about to be played on your face. By now it happened once per day, and all the puppets at home would immediately drop whatever they were doing, just to watch the show. They even had given you a name, as that was something that your original owner hadn't done before he disappeared. The townspeople of home had given you the name Oracle Vision. Honestly, you were proud to finally have a name. Today, the show had been a small blonde girl with green eyes getting soft eyes from a clown-shaped animatronic. Julie loved it so much, she immediately went out to buy an extra portion of ice cream at Howdy's. After the show had concluded, all but one puppet were left. The enigmatic Wally Darling, painter extraordinaire. He stood casually at the repair shop's entrance, leaning against the main door frame. Your eyes appeared on the television, allowing you to see. You had the ability to form very simple body parts on your television head when no show was on. This included a pair of blue circles that functioned like eyes, a green triangle that appeared below them for your mouth, and whenever you felt particularly emotional, your TV could depict a cartoon puppet face which everyone considered to be your true face, as it was the same brown color as your body, with a blue nose and a wide mouth. You blinked at Wally. He was seemingly deep in thought. Can I do something for you? You asked cautiously. It was very unusual for one of the puppets to remain in the store. After all, it was quite eerie here. Really, only the place around you was somewhat maintained, so they could sit without getting their bums all dusty. I was just thinking said Wally before looking outside. You seemed a bit down lately. You tilted your head curiously just far enough to not fall over due to its weight. Feeling down? You asked. As in sad. Or disappointed. You blinked, leaning back a little. 
Well, maybe. I'm alone most of the time, and I guess I was just thinking too much. Morley chuckled. <laughs> Don't say that. Thinking is good. Keeps your brain from rotting. You giggled in response at the witty comment. I guess... Hmm. Well, I have been thinking of going outside, though I'm property of the repair shop and unless someone purchases me, I can't even think about leaving. Wardy scratched over his chin and thought. Hmm. And how are you planning on going outside? You can't walk and who knows what happens when you get unplugged. Wally purposefully ignored that you were technically property of the shop, as you hated that a lot, and he didn't want to make you feel worse. You shrugged. Also, well, old TVs like me, we retain some energy. I think I've been told. Maybe for a minute? I don't know. Um, but even if... I guess a minute isn't that much to explore the outside, huh? Wally sighed almost desperately. You were giving him quite the head scratcher. On one hand, he wanted to help you because you were a friend, but on the other, you were fragile, and no one wanted to be responsible for losing their daily dose of the IRL. After a while, Wally smirked. I have an idea. He winked at you. I'm gonna steal you, Oracle. You were quietly snoring inside the TV repair shop. Wally had left you almost immediately after bravely declaring that he was going to steal you. Excitedly, you had been waiting the entire evening, but eventually you could no longer stay awake and just dozed off. Meanwhile, outside, Wally was pushing a wheelchair, or humming the song you played whenever a show was about to happen. He had removed the car battery of his big red car and deposited it under the chair in a basket together with a bunch of cables. He would DIY something so you could have juice while exploring the outside with him. Wally pushed the wheelchair into your store, parking it right in front of you before shaking you awake. Confused, your eyes popped up on the screen. Wally! You said surprised. Before your eyes fell onto the wheelchair, and that's when you realized he had been serious. Where, where did you get that from? The painter shrugged. Uh, does it really matter? No, just... I... It's a nice gesture, but that still doesn't fix the energy problem. He smiled and reached under it, showing you the jumper cables. I got a battery! You smiled and laughed. This, this was really happening, was it? You animated a tear of happiness dropping from your right eye. Aww. He blushed a bit. You cute. He thought. Are you sure you can live without electricity for an entire minute? He asked skeptically as he approached your electricity cable. You gulped, heart jumping. Admittedly, this was the scary part. It took Wally a few minutes to attach everything. Okay, he said in a hushed tone. You looked at him, your hands clasping together in anticipation. I'm about to pluck you out. Three. Two. His eyes met yours. This was the last chance. One. Darkness. Nothing. You felt absolutely nothing. A dead conscious in an endless void. Was this how death felt like? Oh, damn it. You'd cry if you could. This this had been a stupid idea. You 
should have never told him. The darkness was all consuming. You didn't know if you were looking up or down, sideways. In the meantime, Wally was hooking you up to his battery. Sparks were flying. And even though it were only about ten seconds that you were sitting there, limp, unmoving, dead, it was horrifying to him just as much as it was for you. He almost considered just plugging you back into the socket and pretend this never had happened, but no, he went through the effort to get all this together. He had to push through. And then your TV turned on. You saw light and colors again. You felt your body again. You could feel your body again! Slowly you opened your eyes. You were sitting in the wheelchair, your hands clasping its armrests. Taking hold of your head, you turned around. Wally was behind you, sweating like bullets, but smiling. Told you it would work. More tears now animated down your eyes. I, I can't thank you enough. His smile turned softly. We haven't even gone outside yet, he spoke, before turning you to the door. A moments later, you felt the cool air blow into your face. You made a delight squeak. Do you like it? You nodded carefully. Yeah, it's even more beautiful than the outside of IRL. Wally had thought deeply about what to do with you, and he had decided to picnic in the outskirts of home. Yeah, that would be the best. With your lack of a mouth, you couldn't really eat. And to not be the only one eating, he didn't even bring snacks. It was more meant to be symbolic. As Wally kept pushing you, you held your right hand up a little, allowing the wind to caress your fingers. Wally hummed. It was so precious seeing your reactions. Almost an hour later, after all, Wally didn't want to risk you getting hurt by going fast. The two of you arrived at the picnic he had already set up. It was a large checkered blanket with a canvas right behind it, atop a small hill surrounded by fields of wheat. The night sky here was perfectly clear and beautiful. Gently, Wally picked you up and set you down on the blanket, making sure to not accidentally disconnect your cable from the battery. I thought, hey, maybe I can paint you. The triangle shape on your screen that formed your mouth quivered excitedly. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll promise I'll do my best. Besides, it's a full moon tonight. I'll be able to see enough. He ordered you to pose a little. Using your hands, you draped your useless legs into an X shape. So you carefully leaned back. Um. <laughs> Wally looked from the canvas to you, then back to the canvas. Uh, okay, perfect. How long will this take? I mean, technically two months. You blinked. I I can't sit here for two months. He chuckled. No, no. I <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just drawing the sketch. It'll take about an hour, and then when we get to painting, I'll do it in my studio. You know, it's just a lot of layers and all, everything needs to dry. Anyways, when it's done, I'll show you, I promise. You chuckled. <laughs> I see. Uh, well, go ahead. Two red circles appeared on your TV screen, an indication that you were blushing. As you were sitting there, Wally got into the zone. Wally tried to maintain a certain kind of small talk, 
like Eddie having told a joke so terrible to Howdy that the caterpillar actually increased the price of the apples for the mailman for that day. And how Julie stuffed herself with so much ice cream after watching this special program today that she vomited. Eventually, however, he stopped talking entirely. Not that you minded. It gave you more time to appreciate the beauty of the outside. Hmm. Okay, said Volley about an hour after he had started. I think I'm happy with this. What do you think? He turned the canvas around. It depicted a quite detailed picture of you lying down, with background details, some shading. You gasped, but and put both hands on your screen. It was so beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. Even though it was merely just a sketch. Wally chuckled. <laughs> You're cute. He said and then gasped. Oh, did, did I say that out loud? You nodded. Blushing herself now in response. I'm sorry. It's okay. I liked it. And I like you. You said. He tapped his fingers together shyly. Do you mean it? Mm-hmm. You fell into thought for a moment. Meanwhile, he approached you, unsure of what to do. And before you even realized, he was sitting next to you, hugging you. You felt his warmth, his soft body. Feeling his hot breath tickle your neck. After a tender moment of silence, he gently laid you down on the blanket. Your puppet face now appeared on the TV, as your emotions were quite overwhelming. Your eyes met, and then he went in for the kiss. Sure, it was awkward. His lips were touching the static, buzzing glass of your TV head. But for the two of you, it was the most romantic thing either of you had ever experienced. It was then his fingers began to explore your body, going from your hips to your chest to your shoulder, before finally taking hold of the buttons of your raincoat. <laughs>